What keeps us healthy and happy as we go through life? Pictures of entire lives. Those pictures are almost impossible to get. The Harvard study of adult development may be the longest study of adult life that's ever been done. For 75 years, we've tracked the lives of 700. 24 men, year after year, asking about their work, their home lives, their health. About 60 of our original 724 men are still alive, still participating in the study. Most of them in their 90s. We don't just send them questionnaires. We interview them in their living rooms. We get their medical records from their doctors. We draw their blood. We scan their brains. What are the lessons that come? From the tens of thousands of pages of information that we've generated, the clearest message that we get from this 75-year study is this: Good relationships keep us happier and healthier. We've learned three big lessons about relationships. The first: It turns out that people who are more socially connected to family, to friends, to community are happier, they're physically healthier, and they live longer. And the experience of loneliness turns out to be toxic. People who are more isolated find that their health declines earlier in midlife, their brain functioning declines sooner, and they live shorter lives. So the second big lesson that we learned is that it's not just the number of friends you have, but it's the quality of your close relationships. High-conflict marriages, for example, without much affection, turn out to be very bad for our health, perhaps worse than getting divorced. The people who were the most satisfied in their relationships at age 50 were the healthiest at age 80. And the third big lesson that we learned is that good relationships don't just protect our bodies; they protect our brains. In your 80s, the people who are in relationships where they really feel they can count on the other person in times of need, those people's memories stay sharper longer. So, what about you? What might leaning into relationships even look like? It might be something as simple as replacing screen time with people time, or livening up a stale relationship by doing something new together, or reaching out to that family member who you haven't spoken to in years. Because those all-too-common family feuds take a terrible toll on the people who hold the grudges. I'd like to close with a quote from Mark Twain: "There isn't time. So brief is life." For bickerings, apologies, heartburnings, callings to account, there is only time for loving, and but an instant, so to speak, for that. The good life is built with good relationships. Thank you. <laughs>